Hi, my name is Coldbear and let's start with Victor Ran. Nobody can deny that a vast array of powerful weapons, game-changing outfits, optional challenges and hidden secrets in this game are very enjoyable. Also here you can dive down on enemies, dodge roll attacks, jump on walls and enjoy entertaining boss fights. Great voice acting and visuals are also in-game, as well as great camera angles and the ability of rotating it. I'm still surprised how many games do not have a camera rotating function even now. What are you hiding? Pineapples in your potato salad? Blast for me! Blast for me! Anyway, Victor Ran is the most metal game I have ever played. Well, aside the brutal legend with Jack Black. Victor Ran has an entire DLC dedicated to the Motorhead band. How cool is that? Spoiler alert. Very cool. They ace that DLC, and if you like metal, Victor Ran is the choice for you, no doubt. And gamers on Steam are praising intuitive controls and fun gameplay. Victor Ran will take about 10 to 20 hours for you to beat it. Darksiders Genesis. This is a great game with great humor and very positive reviews on Steam. It is well balanced to play in co-op mode, but also fun in single player as well without any regrets. You, like me, probably have no friends anyway. Although I must warn you that here you'll do more shooting than bashing and slashing, but you will get a fair share of the latter as well. Gamers on Steam are praising the aesthetics, interesting story and fun gameplay, but are grumpy about controls and few almost unsolvable puzzles. Game has great graphics, a bit childish dialogues, terrible camera angles and no potato Sadman class, which is a shame. Anyway, from me it gets 8 cold beers out of 10. Nobody saves the world. When an ancient calamity reawakens, who can save the world? And the answer is... Nobody! That's you. You are nobody. Not in real life. In real life you are an awesome, beautiful person. Never doubt that. Now subscribe. So here you'll master the art of transformation to become a slug, ghost, dragon, a horse or someone else. Like an egg, for example. Actually, here you'll find more than 15 distinct forms you can become of. You can mix and match abilities in unexpected ways to unlock and complete even more challenging quests. You can explore a vast overworld on your own or with a friend online. This game is not only beautifully drawn, but it's kinda crazy as well, just like your sister. Nine Parchments This is a cooperative action RPG game of magical mayhem from the creators of the Trine series. Here, runaway apprentice wizards seize the opportunity to complete their spellbooks by going after the lost Nine Parchments, super powerful spells meant to be wielded by the most powerful mages. So as these newbies rapidly acquire powerful new spells without learning proper safety measures, it's natural that their hasty progress results in plenty of deadly accidents. Nine Parchments combines real-time spell shooting action with usual RPG elements. Here you level up your character and collect magical loot, filling your wardrobe with zillions of wizard hats and powerful staves. People on Steam are saying that this is a super entertaining game to play with your friends. Doesn't matter imaginary or real ones. Although keep in mind that if you play with imaginary friends, you will need another pair of non-imaginary hands. Why must everything be so complicated? I don't get it. Path of Exile this is probably the best-known isometric action RPG besides Diablo itself. And the best part of it, besides being a AAA game with a very positive review score on Steam, is that it is completely free. And as developers say, it will never be pay to win. Of course, it tries to feed yourself on your inner greed demons trying to convince you to buy some cosmetics or storage space. But if you can stand before that urge like a true warrior you are, nobody is taking a cent from you. Also, in-game your power is limited only by your skills and items, not by money you spend. Although honestly, with Without buying storage space, the game is not as good, so it's just a matter of time on how much you can suffer without buying it. Game is constantly updated. Some patches infuriate players, some make them happy, but in general this game is very much alive. According to last statistics, it has from 20 to 50,000 players online at any given time. New areas and mechanics seem to come every quarter and Path of Exile 2 is on the corner as well. Chronicon. It looks like a simple 2D game, but an overwhelmingly positive review score should really grab your attention. Here you'll find 5 large acts, each with their own storyline, 4 unique classes, procedurally generated dungeons, local co-op for up to 4 players, remote play together support, 400 unique items, 900 skills, abilities and perks, hardcore mode and zillion other things. For many people, this is the best action RPG game they have ever tried in their lives, and for some it's very simple and boring. So basically it still can disappoint you, but the chances are really slim. And the price is nice, don't think twice. Titan Quest Anniversary Edition 
Initially the game was released in 2006, so it would be outdated by now, but thanks to this major overhaul, it is not. And it has more than 90% of positive reviews, so please, nail down your attention if you like games like Diablo. So if you ever played the old version, keep in mind that here you will get better resolutions, larger camera distance, multiplayer, mod support, Steam achievements, improved enemy and pet AI, countless bug fixes, dozens of new heroes, and so on. Titan Quest is a great game, one of the most beloved by the action RPG community, and I couldn't recommend it to you enough. It's literally like a potato itself in a potato salad. And people on Steam are saying that this is a masterful variation of Diablo formula and an absolute must-play if you like isometric hack-and-slash titles. The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing Final Cut this is definitely one of the most known action RPGs out there. This version of the game is a collection of three standalone episodes told as one continuous story, with six playable classes and a new endgame mode with a huge variety of open missions. People on Steam are saying that this is a very addictive game. Not as addictive as Potato Salad, but there is a huge chance that you will have a lot of great time, although it has some minor problems, lame targeting system and a bit shallow character builds. Also you may encounter some bugs and glitches along the way as well. But anyway, this game is really entertaining and also huge, the campaign is offering over 50 hours of gameplay. Also, if you are in doubt, you can download a free demo version at first and try it out. Grim Dawn among all the games similar to Diablo, there is no doubt that Grim Dawn is one of the best examples ever made in this field. More than 90% of positive reviews can confirm that with ease. You will be able to enjoy the dual class system, combine any of six distinct classes with over 25 skills and modifiers per class, meaning that your hero will definitely be some kind of unique abomination nobody else has. Although I can say from my own experience, if you are playing for the first time, don't do that. Swallow your dignity and just watch some tutorial of the most powerful full build possible, because otherwise you may end like me. You will nurture a warrior who does cool magic, but later in the game is completely useless. And that drop of quality is huge, from a Gandalf to a Las Vegas magician. I will tell Pen Gillette about this blasphemy, he will make you disappear. Oh, no, 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 please don't. It's too late for that. Weird Vest you'll discover a dark fantasy reimagining of the Wild West, where lawmen and gunslingers share the frontier with creepy creatures. You will journey through the story of a group of atypical heroes, written into legend by the decisions you make. Each journey is unique and tailored to the actions taken. A series of high-stakes adventures where everything counts and the world reacts to the choices you make. You'll be often faced with brutal choices and consequences that can't be undone. Like, you know, when you put too much salt in your potato salad, you can't take it out. Well, actually you can make more potato salad without salt and mix everything together, so there is no moral here, just carry on. Minecraft Dungeons this is a very nice isometric hack-and-slash game, a spin-off of a very well-known game, Terraria. Well, maybe not, I'm kidding. The plot here revolves around a villain known as Ark Illager, the leader of monster armies. Here you can brave the dungeons alone or team up with friends. Up to four players can battle together, all that in an epic quest to save the villagers and take down the evil Ark Illager. You will explore dungeons, swarms and canyons full of dangers. One thing that distinguishes Minecraft dungeons from other hack-and-slash games is that your character's power is solely determined by finding better and better equipment, mainly weapons. Also here you can unlock over 200 150 unique artifacts and other stuff to perform and survive devastating special attacks. And when your wife or husband finds you playing this, say that you are doing research or something, you know, for science. Let's be fair, it's a game for kids, but it has over 90% of positive reviews on Steam, so how can you resist? Book of Demons it is a surprisingly good game ignored by many just because of how it looks. It has great lighting effects, but those paper figures are definitely not for everyone. Anyway, here you can decide the length of the quests, wield magic arts instead of weapons and slay armies of darkness in the dungeon below the old cathedral. Yeah, I bet you heard that somewhere. People on Steam are talking that Book of Demons has great replayability with a variety of combinations, interesting art direction, and fast, non-boring gameplay. Although some are saying that the game can become a bit monotonous, but I'm pretty sure that it can happen because of the skills and spells you use. If your build is not fun enough, you will get not enough fun. Simple, right? So google some nice builds before you play. Let there be a bit of Book of Demons among big boob milfs in your search history. Anyway, the game has 91% of positive reviews and it's kinda cheap. Hades 
This is one of the most known action RPG roguelite games in our universe, and it holds third place on the best Steam rankings. That is huge, let it sink, third place among all the games on Steam. So here your goal is to avoid dying, but the game mechanics are made in a way that you will die a lot and those deaths will make you stronger. That is the beauty of Hades, instead of raging when your protagonist dies, you are happy and then you try again and again because it's very fun or because you are some kind of mad. As a hist. Let's be fair, it's probably because of that, and it's okay, I don't judge. Sands of Aura. This is a wonderful hack and slash RPG, but with huge influence from the Souls like genre, meaning that you will die a lot, and then you will die even more, and that, at least for me, takes a lot of fun away. Game has really beautiful graphics, and despite it's a hard game, you can control your hero quite easily and kill some monsters without a sweat. Well, after some practice. To be honest, after a lot of practice. And for some of you, practice may not help at all. Well, that escalated quickly. Anyway, I'm kidding. The game is not insanely hard, but it will challenge you, especially the bosses. Otherwise, it's a nice game. But keep in mind that it is in early access and you may want to wait for the full release, because they are resetting the progress with every update. That kinda sucks, I ain't gonna lie. Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Mata He'll become a mighty Inquisitor and carry out the Emperor's will. Choose one of the multiple classes and take part in brutal combat encounters. Embark on a huge variety of missions with your fellow agents and fight through a single-player story campaign. It is set in a haunted fortress monastery which hides a terrible secret from the past of the Inquisition. Yeah, they probably have put pineapple into potato salad. In general, this is a very nice game, but keep in mind that it is best played with a gamepad, because playing with keyboard and mouse is really not as comfortable. Although some people could argue about about that because there are many gamers in both gamepad and keyboard camps. Although let's be fair, gamepad camp is way bigger. And the gameplay, the main thing of every game, is highly addictive. It will burn tens or even hundreds of your hours even quicker than alcohol does. People on Steam are saying that this game is a no-brainer for those who like Diablo. It's basically the same just in Warhammer universe. Riftbreaker here you are, the Rift Breaker, an elite scientist commando inside a powerful mecha suit. Ooh la la. You have entered a one-way portal to a distant planet at the far reaches of the Milky Way. You have a purpose of building up a base that will allow travels back to Earth and continue colonization. So you are tasked to construct a two-way rift back to Earth, because living on a planet without cold, refreshing beer or potato salad is painful and that shouldn't even be a legal thing. Although you encounter a bit of a bigger problem than the absence of beer, which is monsters, thousands of them. The game itself is a hybrid between Starcraft, Diablo and Satisfactory, a really great and entertaining game. Rum and Gun if you are searching for something less popular but still good enough to lose your time in, Ram and Gun fulfills these criteria and offers even more. This is a game made by one man, but by playing it you probably couldn't tell that. Also, it's super cheap and it has very positive reviews on Steam. I follow the guy on Facebook and I can see that Ram and Gun is a passion project. The updates are quite constant and they not only fix bugs but include additional content as well. Like literally, every time I check on him he showcases an update with new enemies and maps. The last time I checked, he introduced epic battles with giant octopuses. Uh, octopuses? Uh, octopusai? Well, tentacle things. The Ascent. This is a solo and co-op action RPG set in a distant cyberpunk world. You will be exploring a corporate-run metropolis stretching high into the sky and filled with creatures from all over the galaxy. If you like Star Wars, Firefly or Cyberpunk 2077, it's a perfect setting for your adventures. You play as a worker enslaved by the company that owns your ass and everyone else in your district as well. They are the ultimate ass holders. But one day you are suddenly caught in a vortex of catastrophic events, so you must take up arms and embark on a new mission to find out what started it all. People on Steam are saying that the game is really beautiful and fun, but kinda riddled with bugs. Although not everyone experiences these problems, the game has a bit less than 80% of positive reviews. For some, it is even the best game they have ever played. I think that is an overstretch, a real overstretch, but kinda encouraging as well. Death Trash this game is awesome. It is set in a semi-open world divided into a few zones. You will spend a lot of time in underground facilities and dungeons as well, but it has a completely different approach to narrative compared to casual games. You never know what to expect. Also, here you will encounter extensive player freedom from manual save games to the fact that any dialogue can be left anytime. Also, here you can kill everyone or don't kill anyone. That is the spirit. That is the cash of dead trash. Highly recommended, especially if you like games Games like Diablo with a hint of pixel art. Okay, with a lot of pixel art. 
Torch Light 2. People on Steam are saying that this game is highly addictive and can fast-forward your life rather quickly. Some people say that this is a spiritual brother of Diablo 2, but I can't agree with that. It's too cartoony, the models and color palette reminds me of World of Warcraft instead. Although I played World of Warcraft for several years, I still have the best memories. I think I will get back to it. That is when I'm old, some 25 years from now. Anyway, Torchlight 2 is great, very complex and fun, and if you are cool with this colorful Disney princess visual style, it may be one of the the best action RPG games you have ever played. Achilles Legends Untold he will take control of a man with a really weak heel, but with very strong everything else. The journey will take you to many different corners of mythological lands, where you'll obtain powerful artifacts that will aid you in your quest. Game has a cool AI system that introduces innovative enemy behavior. Opponents have unscripted interactions with each other and are capable of coordinated attacks, sometimes even taking advantage of their surroundings. Developers are saying that the game is Souls-like, but not as hard as Souls games, so various Diablo-like action RPG Lovers could play it as well. So it's like Sans of Aura, a mix of genres, but it's really worth your attention. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!